say that uh, you know I brought my daughter Priscilla. You know my wife turns to me and she says, uh, "Ada, Priscilla's got a high fever," and I said, <clears throat> "She does." And she goes over there and stands by me, and I felt her, and I said, "Let's go over there to the front. Let's go pray for you. Yes. Have the ministry lay hands on you." Yes. And I thank the Lord, Church, because when we got done praying, I was laughing for joy. Yes, yes, because of yes. The joy of the Holy Ghost, the yes. joy of the Lord yes. is our strength. Yes. And it is our encouragement. Amen. The joy Amen. of the Lord is. Yes. You know, when the, when uh, God, the angel appeared to Gideon and he said, go and fight yes. against the enemy. Yes. And he said, and yell out the sword of the Lord and, the sword and of praise Lord. God. And let, me, and let me tell you something. They made a joyous noise they did. and the enemy started sl slaying their own one yes. against the other. Amen. 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 Because the joy of the Lord is the strength of the saints of God. Amen. Amen. Don't like this, but it's all, it's true of anyhow. Amen. And I, I wanted to say another thing. That for two weeks, for two weeks, I uh, two, two, two nights in a room, I was standing there and my wife says, you got to look in your face. They're going to think you're mad at the church. I said, I've got a pain in my stomach. <clears throat> and for two weeks, I've been, you know that big old belly I had? For two weeks I've been sick. <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me. The devil, like I said, has told me that I have cancer and I have there. this and I have that. And uh, you know, when I started seeing my stomach going down, I said, maybe the devil's telling me the truth. And I, I was going, one night I went like three times and another night I went four times. For two weeks I've been sick and, and those two nights I've been here and I was feeling a lot of pain in my stomach. But I love the Lord and I love the church. I love the church. I really do love y'all and, and uh, I really do. I love the church. I know that it's the body of Christ and I know that it is the, it is the same children of God. And I, I know that God paid, you know, a big price for each and every one of us. And woe unto him that that hurts one of my little ones. You know, he told Saul, he said, Saul, why do you prosecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Christ, whom thou prosecutest. Amen. If I do anything to one of the little children of God, woe unto me. Right. And, and let me tell you, I've been, I've been sick, but I have a determination to go on, you know, like I've said before. Like I've said before, if I fall flat on my face walking, I say, Lord, if it's my time, I'm going to go on. Amen. Because I know that he's real, he's genuine. Right. I know that I serve a resurrected Savior. Right. I know that I, I serve a living God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know that he yes, said, ask, and he shall receive. Whatsoever you ask in my name, he shall be given unto thee. And I believe it with all my heart. I don't Amen. care what the devil says or he likes or don't like. Praise God. Some sister said, uh, oh, and, and we're the devil all the time. <laughs> You know, but anyhow, I love the Lord, and, and I wanted to testify that I've been real sick, but uh, I don't know. I've always been like that, Pastor Marlo. I've always, I've always trusted God. I, always, I have always believed and, and trust in the Lord. When I broke my leg working with uh, <clears throat> mostly roofing, I, I told my wife, I said I would leave the crutches outside. <clears throat> I saw Sister Leona, and she says, "Oh, something must have happened, to Sister Leona." I said, yeah, I said, I see she's got crutches. And I said, when I used to come, when I broke my leg, <clears throat> people didn't believe that I broke my leg. Because I would hide the crutches outside in the, in the flower bed, and I would walk inside. <laughs> but I would sit in that pew, and I tell you what, it felt like a knife was going right through my leg. And then I went home, and he, the doctor gave me some pain pills, and I took those pain pills, and I... Put him down the commode. Yeah. Hey, and my bedroom was on, on the top, on the second floor. I'd get on those steps and I'd go over to the bedroom. I, yeah. Going back. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, and the doctor told me, he said, I gotta put a cast on you, Mr. Rosales. I said, no, sir. He said, you're not gonna put a cast on me. Right here in Manatee Hospital. And, <clears throat> and he said, I have to put a cast on you. And, he, and I said, no, sir, you're not gonna put a cast on me. He said, you're just a stubborn man, aren't you? I said, uh, yes, sir, I am. I said, look, sir, I said, I don't want to, whenever you take, if I let you put a cast on me and 
and you go to take that cast off. I said, I don't want to have a, a, a big fat, a fat leg and a real skinny leg. I said, I've seen people when they take their cast off, the, if they take it off the arm, it will be real skinny. And I said, I, you know what? He said, well, I'm not going to put none on you, but the, the bone's not going to come together. It's not going to mend, and it's not going to heal. I said, well, I'll take my chances with my Lord. And two, three weeks later, I was right here in 64, running up and down, picking cucumbers, and I was limping. Picking cucumbers. Yeah. Running. Yeah. And I was limping, but praise God, here I am. Yeah. Oh, my all right. Yeah. 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 He gave me x-rays. When he gave me x-rays, he said, your, yeah. your uh, bone is broken in three ways. And he said, and i got to put that cast on it. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, I was listening <laughs> to Pastor Marlowe preach, and and uh, what Sister Marlowe said, and I, Howard said it, I, I was going to, you, you, you too. Uh, you took my word, Brother Merriman, I tell you what. <laughs> That's why I was going I was just going to sit down and I said, Brother Merriman, just the Lord used him and he done a wonderful job. He encouraged the church. Amen. He obeyed the Lord and the Lord blessed. Amen. Praise God. But I tell you what, I want to say that I want, I don't want to be like, like Cain. Amen. I don't want to be like Cain. I want to make it. Amen. I don't want to have a, a, a good, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, he had good intentions, but good intentions is not going to cut it. Amen. He had good, you know, sin has always been from the beginning. When Adam and Eve, when God created Adam out of the uh, dust of the earth, and he breathed into his nostrils, and, and uh, the man became a little soul. And, yes. and sin started right there in the Garden of Eden. We all know the story. And we all heard Pastor Morrow, you know, when he said about uh, them, he, they knew that they were naked. He knew he hid himself because he knew that he had disobeyed God. And when God came in the cool of the inn and looking for him, he said, Adam, where art thou? He said, where art thou, Adam? He just said, I'm hiding, I'm hiding, Lord. He said, why are you hiding? Because he said, I'm naked. He said, what, what, who told you that you're naked? He said, did you disobey me? He said, I've ate of the tree that, that you said. The, the woman that you gave me, she gave me to, to eat of the fruit. Yes. And he said, he said, Adam, I told you that the day you eat of that tree, you would eat of that tree, that you would surely sure. die. And we know that he died to death. We know that he died, and death means separation from the power of the source of the, of the power of life. And his life separated from him. God separated him. And he was, he was not walking with Adam no more henceforth, you know. He, he, he pushed him. He drove him out of the garden. And he said, I will have a... Will. When he had Cain, uh, he was, it was after the flesh. And he said, we have a son from God. But he wasn't a son from God. He was an act of the flesh. And Cain had, had good intentions. And I can have good intentions. But I saw those children receive them the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight, made up their minds and came forward and accepted the Lord in their lives. And that's what it takes. Good Amen. intentions will not do it, Pastor Marlowe. Amen. Good intentions will not do it, church. Amen. We have to be born again. Amen. As Jesus told Nicodemus, Amen. you must be born Amen. again of the water and of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. I can have good intentions. And I can, I can come and bring sacrifices, offerings to the Lord, <laughs> but God will not accept it. He had no respect unto Cain's offering and his sacrifice. Amen. I don't want to be his Cain. I don't want to bring no sacrifice, no offering of the ground, of the fruits of the ground. I want to, of the earth, you know, I want to, I want to bring fruits. Living and I can't give, I cannot bring living fruit before the Lord, no living offering, no living sacrifice. I can't present my body as a living sacrifice before the Lord, which is my reasonable service, unless there is a blood atonement, and there, unless there is blood in the sacrifice and the offering that I bring before the Lord. I don't want to have a good intention. I want to have, amen, a living sacrifice. Amen, present your bodies a living sacrifice. I want to bring, amen, that, that oxen and that horn full of oil to sacrifice unto the Lord our God. I can't bring no sacrifice. You can't bring, you can have good intentions. I can have good intentions. But unless there has been a blood atonement, 
and the doorposts of your door. And let the blood is being spread upon the doorposts of your door. And the angel of death has passed on by your house. Hallelujah. And then we have eternal life because there is a blood. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned, God slew the first little animal. God slew and shed the blood for the first time for the sin that they had committed. And it was pointing towards, amen, John the Baptist said, behold, when he was baptizing and he saw the Lord coming, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which take us away the sins of the world. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. That sacrifice that he done, that he made there in the Garden of Gethsemane and in the Garden of Eden, let me tell you, it was pointing towards that supreme sacrifice, the supreme Lamb, the Lamb of God. God, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing, a pure man. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, and Nick, that's what it takes, church. Amen. I don't want to deceive myself. Amen. I really don't want to deceive myself. Amen. I don't want to pull the wool over my own eyes. But I want to bring a true and living sacrifice before the Lord, which has the blood atonement upon it. All right. It's the blood God. that Jesus Amen. Man on the cross. Amen. Amen. That's all I, I wasn't going to say, oh, but you know, I felt led Amen. of the Lord, and I don't want to deceive myself. Amen. And I know that you don't either. Amen. But thank God for the revelation. Amen. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for a solid foundation. Amen. Thank God for a solid rock that is unmovable. Hallelujah. Cannot be moved. It's not sinking, sand, but it's a solid foundation. Amen. And if we have that blood atonement, we're upon a solid foundation. And may God bless you. I love you. It's your prayer. Right. Amen. 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 Amen.